Today, we're gonna to talk about Zoom hacks, specifically how we use Zoom in our studio. The most asked questions in the comments, the questions we get during consulting, we're gonna go through it all. We got lots of great stuff. Let's see, we got Zoom rooms, uh, return feeds, mix minus, all of it, we're gonna go through it. First things first, 1080p in Zoom. One of the most requested questions we get, how do you get 1080p in Zoom? The answer is you need a business slash enterprise account, you need to get your account approved, and or you can decide to use Zoom Rooms. All right, and I'm gonna show you a quick comparison here of the difference. So on my right, we have a approved account uh, and we also have Zoom Rooms on it. Zoom Rooms, I'll get into that a little bit later, Basically, that is the software that conference rooms at a business might have to be able to display a Zoom call on a TV without having like a big computer and stuff like that in the middle. On my left here, we have just a normal Zoom account that is paid, okay, but not necessarily activated for 1080 or anything like that. So on my right, uh, or the box I'm in, I'm in both boxes, right? On this side is going to be uh, what the Zoom Rooms feed is, right? This is should be higher quality. On the left, this is just a normal Zoom call, okay? Hopefully, you'll be able to see the difference in the quality of these two things. We're showing you what Zoom sees right now, all right? Look at some of the details around here. Maybe this speaker is fuzzier on one screen than on the other. Maybe the details in my face are gonna be clear in one image or the other. We're gonna let you decide which one you like more but we can tell that we like the one on the right more than the one on the left. Let me tell you what we see. Realistically, we don't get 1080p all the time. We have an account that's activated for it. We've seen in the statistics of the settings that we are sending and receiving 1080p Zoom, but that's not all the time. Most of the time, it's actually 720p. Do we get it all the time? No. 720 has been great for us though. It's a very noticeable difference. We're completely happy with it. Although in certain situations, we do push and make sure we're getting 1080 if we're doing like green screens via Zoom and things like that. Zoom rooms. Okay, I'm excited about this one. Zoom rooms. So I'm actually gonna walk over onto stage and show you what that looks like. Real quick though, you see this laptop right here? This is running Zoom Rooms. It's just a MacBook Pro. It happens to have two outputs, okay? Plus its own screen, so it's a total of three displays. We have this awesome iPad app. It's a feature of Zoom Rooms. This controls everything on it. I never touch this computer. Once it gets up, I run everything on here. I'm gonna head to the stage and show you how it works. All right, so I'm on stage right now, and it's messy, but that's fine. I'm holding the iPad app. I am the presenter. I have this app and I can make a bunch of changes. So if you look at my confidence monitors, what I'm currently seeing right now, I'm seeing a bunch of stuff, right? Uh, I'm, and I can change it very easily. I'm going to walk into the shot here. So on this iPad app, I can actually change what views are going to what screens. It's super helpful. And if you're a teacher, if you're the one always presenting, if you're in front of these screens, this might be very useful to you to switch between a gallery view. Let's say I wanna pin someone on this screen right here. I wanna print pin Brian sitting at the switcher table. I can pull up the participants and I can select any one of these guys and I can pin the video, right? Pinned over here, that's fine. Oh, sorry, I'm selecting what screen? Pin to screen one. Boom, I've just pinned it to screen one. I can do all of that right from the iPad app, completely wireless. It's really nice. I can also see chat messages. I can see who is on the call, right? And I can admit people. I can go into a breakout room. Pretty much everything Zoom can do, you can do with the iPad app. So that's Zoom Rooms. And this is the iPad app really what sold it for me. Being able to control all of my multi-views without having to switch what's in it and being able to stand up here and chat with the participants, see who's on the call, change who I'm looking at from up here, giving the talent the control can be very helpful, or I sit in the back, I let the talent be up here, and I sit in a chair, lean back, and can control what they see. Hack number three. Let's pop into this computer and let's take a look at what we do here. All right, so here it is. Uh, settings. 
Let's go to video settings first, all right? Currently, this one's just on a webcam. I'm gonna pull this down to the corner. Let's go gen general first. Use dual monitors. This is key. If you're looking at me in this window, you notice I have an external monitor, just one external monitor here, and I pulled the main window up here. Then I have enabled dual screens, and I have the secondary window all the way down here. Let's get my mouse somewhere. There it is. Pull this on. So you can see this is my secondary window. It's usually pulled down off screen. Why do we do this? We do this when it comes to screen sharing, right? So when someone shares their screen, it automatically takes over everything. And we've been in the middle of conferences where someone shares their screen when they're not supposed to. Luckily, didn't hurt us at all. Because we have this set up, the screen share never goes on to your main display when you have dual screens enabled. It's defaults to your secondary display, your secondary window. That's great for us because now no way that someone's going to do a screen share and it's going to interrupt our pins, our feeds, who we have on screen. So that's very helpful there. Um, the other reason we have our main window being sent to the switcher in our external display here is because it actually provides a clean feed. If I take this off the screen, you notice that all the windows are going to disappear. This is a clean feed. You're watching me through Zoom right now. You might have my audio delayed because I'm running into the switcher via audio, but we're watching a Zoom call, okay? So that's how we get clean feeds out of Zoom. Interestingly enough, if you put the second window up into Zoom, you don't get a clean feed. It's actually gonna have a little icon in the upper right-hand corner the entire time. Currently, that does not go away. So that's why we put our main window here. Another great hack that we use is the gallery view. When we're getting ready for a conference, we have something like this up. And then when we're ready to start pinning people to different Zoom drones and things like that, we'll come up here, right click on the three dots, and we can, well, this one was pinned, pin to the first screen. Boom, it takes over the entire screen and it's really easy to pick who we want to go where. Let's go to video. Currently, this is the FaceTime camera. Again, nothing special there. You would hit this and be able to select other cameras, other webcams if you have them connected, just like the A10 minis, the extremes, web presenters, a video assist, uh, any of those. Uh, we do not touch up our appearance. We do not adjust for low light. We make sure our feed going into the camera is clean, uh, and that way we're not having Zoom do any extra processing. Always display participant names. Turn that off because we want clean feeds. Turn off video. We want to keep that on. Always show video preview dialogue when joining a meeting. That's fine. Uh, hide non-video participants. This is key, not so much for you, but for your clients. All right. A lot of times we're joining a Zoom call with eight computers, none of which have their video on. And then we have clients go, well, why do I see all these extra Zoom captures, these extra Zoom drones? We then instruct them to say, hey, click the three dots and there's a way to hide non-video participants. Boom. All of them go away and all they see is the people with their video on on the call. That really cleans it up for them, keeps all the boxes as big as possible. I now have one non-video participant. Let me show you where those three dots are. You can be right on the feed with no video and right there, hide non-video participants. Click that and it disappears. It's still on the call. It's still there. And the second I show the video, I pop back up, right? Or Brian pops back up with his webcam. So that's how you can hide non-video participants. All right, audio. We're gonna get into mix minus a little later, but in terms of audio settings, uh, normally we would be routing in uh, or outputting out of the headphone jack and then running that into here, or you have something like a scarlet box like this, uh, you can actually have inputs coming in and outputs coming out the back. So that is nice, this is called uh, an audio, it's a sound card, it's an audio capture device, whatever you wanna call it. Um, Scarlet ones are very popular, this one's USB-C. 
really, we don't care about any of the other settings. Um, we don't really do screen shares, but I will show you how we send a screen or a teleprompter or anything into Zoom in a second. Uh, the next one's probably gonna be about recording. People ask us all the time, how do we record our Zoom calls? We record uh, isolated feeds, okay? Which means we're recording the screen here, not necessarily on Zoom. Although we always record on Zoom as a backup because we love our backups. The thing you need to know about the recording is when Zoom records, it can record a gallery view, it can record a speaker view, it can record any of those things, but it can also record all of the individual audio. This is key, okay? We do not get individual audio for every single Zoom participant coming into our studio, okay? We get one feed coming out of Zoom One here that has all Zoom's audio in it, everything but our own voice, everything but what we send out to the client. Okay, so we're getting all of them as one fader. And then we're sending our signal to that exact same computer and that's how Zoom is not causing an echo or anything like that. In post-production, we pull in the Zoom individual audio, okay? This way, let's say someone's dog starts barking on the call, but it's not the person talking, it's some other random person. Well, we want that to not end up in the final edit. So Zoom can record, let's say seven people on the call, all seven different audio tracks, and then in post, we can simply replace the audio with clean audio from Zoom, all right? So that is one way you get individual audio in post. You record on Zoom and make sure you have the setting in your admin preferences to record individual audio. Um, that's pretty much it for settings. Again, uh, we really only jump around under general for our dual displays, video, and audio. Clean feed versus screen shares. Let me tell you how we get screen shares, by the way. The way screen shares work is when someone shares their screen on Zoom and you have dual screen enabled, the screen share always, def always defaults to the second screen, okay? So this means on, let's say we have eight laptops here. Let's say on seven of them, that main window is going to be up here, pinned with someone running into the switcher. Then on, let's say that eighth laptop, that's actually gonna be flipped. We're gonna have the secondary window on the top display and the main window down here. This way we reserve that secondary window to be just in case anyone does a screen share. Just in case someone's gonna wanna in the middle of presenting or in the middle of talking, say, hey, let me share my screen. Let me show the audience what I'm doing. Boom, it's always gonna pop up on number eight and none of our other one through sevens are gonna get interrupted with a screen share. We're gonna keep all of their faces on the screen and that's how we handled those situations. So your secondary window, when someone does a screen share, will show the screen share while your main window will stay with all of your pins uh, still there. So that's how we handle those situations. Return feeds. All right, this is how we get a teleprompter, multiple feeds into Zoom. Behind all of our laptops here, or most of them, I should say, we have A10 minis, okay? We have one there, we have one here, we have another one over here, if you can see that. And what we do is, because they're all on the call, we just route whatever we want to it. For instance, Brian, Let's go ahead and route uh, to Zoom return to. Let's route graphics to. All right, to Zoom return to, let's route graphics to. Great, and you can see it just popped up on here. Can we pull up Zoom one for them on the program? We're gonna pull up Zoom one, which is this screen right here, okay? And you can see, if I get in one of these shots here, you can see I'm able to see everyone on the call as well as a teleprompter. Let's go back to camera one. That's how we send anything we need to into Zoom. We don't do a screen share. We don't do any of that. We simply use one of our, let's say four feeds into Zoom and just route whatever we need to it. That's the beauty of having our 8K constellation with all of our aux outs. We're able to make those changes really fast and on the fly. All right, spotlight versus pins. Okay. Spotlighting means that every single person on the call is going to see 
what you tell them, all right? So let me show you how to spotlight someone. I want to spotlight my face for everyone to see, okay? I'm gonna click here. Uh, oh, all right, great point. Let's go back to camera one. You can only spotlight if you're the host. This computer is not currently the host. This one is. So that's why when I clicked into those settings, I couldn't see anything. I could make it a co-host and then it can spotlight. I'm just gonna go over here to zoom one and I'm gonna spotlight someone's feet. All right, so let's go ahead and spotlight the, my face right here. Now I have a bunch more settings because I'm the host. Let's see, spotlight for everyone. When I do this, every single laptop with a main feed on top is gonna get spotlighted. And now you can see all of these laptops, all right, at least all the ones on this call here, this is on a different call, all of these just had that spotlight show up on top. So that's not great. We don't really wanna be doing that when we're in the middle of a show because I just lost all of my pins, right? What we'd rather do is we'd rather pin, okay? And maybe what we wanna do is spotlight for everyone else and then put our secondary windows up. You're not gonna get the clean feed then, all right? These are compromises you have to make. Zoom's not perfect. Zoom's, there's always cons to every platform software you choose. I could pull the secondary win window up and then pin on all the secondary windows and then I get to keep my pins. That can work. Instead, I'm gonna remove the spotlight here Notice that some of these displays went back and then I can go and I can pin whoever I want on whatever screen I want. Pin to first screen, pin to second screen. I can do all those things. So uh, spotlight means everyone's gonna see what you spotlight and you can spotlight multiple people as of Zoom 5.0. Pinning, pinning is only for you. It's only gonna affect that computer that you're touching, that you're pinning on. You can pin to the first screen, the second screen, and I believe now you can pin multiple windows to your main screen in a gallery view. This means if I have five people on the call but I only wanna see two of them in my gallery view, I can still pin those two just to the gallery view. So that's spotlights versus pinning. Uh, we went over recording individual audio, and last thing we're gonna do is talk about mix minus. We're gonna head over to my office with the whiteboard and I'm gonna explain the best that I can what is Mix Minus, how it works, and how you can set it up. All right, welcome to Zoom University. I'm your instructor, Brandon. This is a whiteboard sticker. Let's talk about Mix Minus specifically in our studio and hopefully you guys will get an understanding of how we can do it with Zoom. You can do the same thing with Skype, Microsoft Teams, Google Hangouts, they all work the same, okay? What you need to understand is Zoom, any of these platforms, they're all doing their own mix minus in the application. It's the same way you can talk to someone on your computer and you're not hearing yourself, you're just hearing all the other people on the call. That's how mix minus works. It doesn't send you back your own feed, it just lets you hear everyone else on the call. Let's draw out our system. Our system has one laptop uh, that is our main. We're gonna call this Z1, okay? And then let's draw out all the other ones too real quick, right? We have upwards of eight. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. This is Z2, this is Z3, that's Z4. Z stands for Zoom, five, six, seven, eight, okay? We use Zoom 1 just as a standard. We could use any of these, but we just have to pick one and stick with it. We're gonna pick Zoom 1. And what we're gonna do is we're gonna send our video into it, we're gonna send our audio into it, and we're gonna pull audio from it, okay? It's really important that you do all of this through one computer. If you try to pull audio from one but send audio into another, that's where you're gonna create this feedback loop. Okay, so we have our switcher here, so that's video. We also have an external audio board. A lot of people call this analog audio, okay? Because we're literally routing cables separately to a mixing board. 
we're going to call that the mixer. All right, and there's a bunch of levels, whatever, not an artist, okay? Okay, we have our mixer, we have our video. We are going to route video signal into our switcher here. We are going to route audio into our mixer, sorry, into our switcher, audio into our mixer, okay? What we can do here is we're going to hear all of these Zoom people. Remember, they're all on the same Zoom call, okay? So I got Debbie over here in Zoom 4. I got David over here in Zoom 3. When they talk, I'm going to be able to hear them. This is basically me hopping on a computer. I'm going to hear all of these guys through Zoom 1, okay? Because, again, we're all on one Zoom call. So when David and Debbie talk, they're going to come through and I'm going to hear them here. I can see them because I'm going to pull their video, right? I'm pulling all their individual video, right? So I'll be able to see whoever I want when I want, but I'm going to hear everyone through Zoom 1, okay? Great. That's the mix. I can send this to a live stream. Everyone can hear everyone on the call. Great. But Brandon, how do you avoid the feedback? That's not really mix minus, that's just mix. Here's where the minus comes in. What I'm gonna send back to Zoom. I'm in the studio, I have a microphone as well. Uh, here's me, right? I have, a, I have a headset on, right? I have a headset, there's my headset. That's also gonna route into the mixer. What needs to go back to Zoom here is let's say you know I got music here too that's going into the mixer right I got playback that's going into the mixer I got a bunch of things going into the mixer right what needs to go back to zoom one is everything but zoom one I can't route this guy back to itself that's the feedback loop so I'm gonna send an aux output and I'm going to make sure this has music in it. All right. I'm going to make sure this has playback in it. Okay. I'm going to make sure it has Brandon's mic in it. Okay. But what it does not have, it does not have Z1. Okay. And that is the minus part. The mix minus the thing you're pulling from, all right? So now what's gonna happen is if I play music to everyone on our stream, the music's also gonna go to Zoom 1 and everyone on the Zoom call is going to hear that music. Everyone's gonna hear the video, everyone's gonna hear me talk, but they're not gonna hear themselves talk because I'm eliminating sending it back to them. So that is how the mix minus works. Well, what is the stream here, Brandon? Is the stream going to hear your headset? No, the audience is not going to hear my headset. Let's, uh, I'm going to switch sides. Let's say we're going to YouTube, okay? This guy is going to go to, to YouTube here. Okay, what am I going to send to it? I'm going to send Zoom 1. I'm going to send music, and I'm going to send playback. What I'm not going to do is I'm not going to send Brandon's mic. All right, I'm not sending my mic. This way, I can talk to Zoom. Zoom is getting routed through to YouTube. But we know how Zoom works. We talked about at the beginning. What's coming out of this computer is not what I'm sending in. Zoom does its own mix minus. You don't talk on your computer on your phone and then hear an echo of yourself. That's Zoom doing its own mix minus. All right? And I'm sending in my voice with music and playback. I'm only ever getting out Zoom. Even though I'm sending in all three of these things, this is only going to ever give me what other people have on the call. 
Then what I send to YouTube, I'm going to send everyone on the call, I'm going to send music, and I'm going to send playback, but I'm not going to send myself. Now I can talk to everyone on the call, give them directions, hey, five minutes left, wrap it up, you're muted, unmute yourself, all of those things. That's how MixMiners works. That's a really simple kind of layout of how MixMiners works in our studio. If you need to get more complicated, I was just on a consultation where I helped a guy uh, with Skype who had four individual Skype calls. Every person was on their own Skype. Well, that's different than this setup. This setup, all of these people are on one call. If each one of these people are on a different call, I need to send a separate mix minus to each one of these, right? Because to this one, I would send everything except Zoom 1, right? And to this one, I would send everything, including Zoom 1, except Zoom 2. I wouldn't be sending Zoom 2 back to this person. I would be sending everything except Zoom 3, everything except Zoom 4, right? That's, I would have to send an individual line back to each one of these people without their own microphones in it. And I would also need to be pulling an individual line from all of these individual people if they're separate Zoom calls, if they're separate Skype calls, separate Microsoft Teams calls. If they're all on one call, I'm already getting all of their audio out of any one of these computers, but I'm deciding to pick Zoom 1, standardize on it, and then I'm sending everything in and out of Zoom 1. This has to do with audio. Okay, if we want to get into video signals, making sure we don't get video feedback, that could be a separate video. But basically, in terms of audio, don't send to the computer what it's giving you. Send something different to the computer than what it's giving you. All right? Simplest way to explain it. Uh, hopefully, this helps. Uh, hopefully, everything made sense. Mix minus is confusing, and it's very helpful to have an outboard audio mixer to be able to handle it. Your ATEM switcher cannot really handle mix minus that well, okay? Uh, you can get away by using a headphone jack and, and setting, uh, let's say, your microphone to the headphone jack and then having Zoom and yourself go to program, but you still have to figure out how to route the headphone jack back into Zoom. You can use something like a Focusrite because that's what I talked about earlier. It's an audio capture device. There are lots of ways to do it. Your ATEM Mini, if you just went out and got an Extreme and you have an ATEM Mini sitting around, you can use that as an audio capture device. You could literally plug a mic into it and have a USB-C out to your computer and then only use that for the microphone. And all of a sudden, you have just have a very expensive audio capture device, okay? There's lots of ways to do this. You can have a bunch of workarounds. Audio capture devices can be as cheap as like $20, $30. I don't recommend them because you get what you pay for. They're cheap. But if you want something cheap, if you want it to just work, you can definitely do that. Um, again, a bunch of ways to handle mix minus. But for people who want to do simple, just want to understand what it is, that's that. Welcome to the longest Zoom class ever. Hope you enjoyed it. Hope you like it. Um, lots more videos to come. We have a bunch of rebuilds we're doing, a bunch of overhauls, which is exciting, uh, a bunch more projects. Um, but in the meantime, hopefully this answers a bunch of people's questions. Thanks.